to this last Sunday of Easter, and also when we celebrate Ascension. So today we are actually between Ascension and Pentecost. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and for that I would like you to send me pictures, text them to me, email them to me, message them to me, pictures of you having fun in the wind, bubbles, paper airplanes, kites, the beach with the wind blowing, but send me some pictures that we can see the wind blowing so that we can put them in a movie for next Sunday. If you think about it, you could be wearing red as well for Pentecost, but that is next Sunday and I would need them by Thursday. Doesn't just have to be kids. I have some of the, some of our kids that are coming in, but also all of you send me some pictures. I hope that you do that. So let us worship and praise God this Sunday, together but separate, but with the Spirit moving through us. Blessed are those trust in God, they will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. Blessed are those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. join me in our call to worship. This is based on Psalm 68. We shout for joy to God who rides upon the clouds. We, we sing, sing praises, praises to our awe-inspiring God, God before, before whom the earth quakes and, and whose abundant blessings provide for all in need. God is sovereign over the earth, defender of the defenseless, and parent to orphans. God creates families for those who are alone. God, God leads captives to freedom and breaks the yoke of oppression. God goes forth before the people, marching through the wilderness of their lives, bringing forth restoration and justice. Sing praise to God, rider of the ancient skies, who dwells in holiness, Proclaim the power of God. O oh God, how awesome you are in your sanctuary. 
You give power and strength to your people. Let us worship God. Will you join us in singing? So this week, as we gather with the children and all of us, I have it here, but we put it on the screen so you can see it better. And the word is what? Pray. Pray. The text today that I'm going to be preaching from talks about praying and pausing. We need to pause between ascension where Jesus rises and Pentecost when the Spirit comes. And the church is born. So we pause and we pray. I would love it if you would send me prayers that you pray. Praying for one another. Praying for our families. Praying for the world. Praying for health and safety. We pray. We pray to God, which is talking to God. All of us can do it. And every minute of every day should be about prayer. Listening to the birds sing can be praying. Looking out at the sun. Laughing and running and playing can be prayer. So let's pray. Let's pray together and pause. Pause as we wait for the Spirit of God to be upon us. So will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for being with us, for loving us, for holding us, and for always being there. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
John 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you and the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you give to me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the name of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Have a good day, everyone. Hear these words from the book of Acts. The history of the telling of the early church. We are in the first book of Acts. And we hear this story of the ascension and moving into the time in between. So hear these words. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has sent by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men, people of, G of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from, a, from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they had been staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves in prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Thanks be to God that we have these words of hope and pause and prayer. Amen. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So picture this. Eleven men, some women, and maybe a few fellow travelers stood on a Palestinian hillside. And they watched in amazement as their teacher, their mentor, their leader, their friend disappeared into the clouds. They look up. They watch. One would think by now that they might have grown beyond amazement. Just think of all that had taken place in their lives, especially since they met Jesus in Galilee. Uh, perhaps it is true that wonders never cease. And then two men standing there chide them for standing there and looking up towards heaven. What can you do but return to Jerusalem to wait, to pause, to see what amazing thing might happen next? They are between the Ascension, and Pentecost. They really don't know that they're in between. They just know that they are gathered with friends. They pause and they devote themselves in prayer. They are witnesses. Today, we gather to praise God, to be witnesses, to pause. We are gathered together, oh, not all in the same place, but with the same God. And it is Memorial Day weekend, and nothing feels the same. No family picnics, no parade, no words at the cemetery to honor those who have fought and died. But it doesn't mean that we can't honor those men and women who fought Flags are placed, prayers are said. They are not forgotten. We are not alone. We are witnesses in new ways. We pause, we pray, the earth breathes, we breathe. And they were constantly devoting themselves they wait, they breathe, and they pray. You see, this group that was gathered on the hillside and then in the upper room were real human beings with names and identities and histories and hopes. They followed Jesus as far as they could. Then they waited for the coming of the Spirit. It was they who made up the first church. Though times have changed radically, and probably more radically than we ever thought possible, 
It is still real human beings, men and women with names and histories and identities and hopes who gather now to wait for the coming of the Spirit. It is we, all of us, who make up today's church as we gather to pray for the coming of the Spirit in our own lives and in the lives of our congregation and community. Even now, we wait, we pause for that Pentecostal power to come upon us. Wooleman, who is a noted theologian and writer, says this. Our waiting and praying indicate that the gift of the Spirit is never an assured possession of the church. It is a gift, a gift which must be constantly sought anew in prayer. Until those who know the facts also experience the power, they do well to wait in Jerusalem and pray. They and we pray for understanding, wisdom, guidance, and strength to go on. They and we pray for hope and pray in hope and somewhat fear, in faith and in doubt, in obedience and in wonder. So my questions for us today are, what does it mean to be witnesses in today's world? What does it mean for us at this time and place as the world begins to open back up and we're not really sure yet about this virus that continues overcome us, where we hear that a hundred thousand people have already died. What does it mean for us to be witnesses in today's world? What does it mean to wait and to pray, to pause, to worship in our own space but together? This week for me, um, there was a, a workshop called Festival of Homiletics. It's a continuing education event for clergy, authorized clergy, across all kinds of denominations. And it's usually so very expensive that I haven't been able to justify the cost to go. But this year it was online, and if you watched it when it was on live, it was free. And so I caught a couple of the workshops and sermons. And so as I paused this week to listen, I was reminded of some learnings from the lectures and the sermons that I heard. They might not mean anything to you, but hear these words. Preachers are not the answer givers. God is. Mystery is our faith and what God can hold. What does it mean to witness prophetically in today's world? The testament of justice is that we serve one another regardless of our own circumstances. Liberation and cross and scar. <clears throat> Mourning is what happening now and name the loss so we can heal. When we worship on our screens, we only see the frame around it. We don't see outside the screen. When you pull back, it could be your spouse, your family, your pets, but our God. God is in the space always. So think on those. They might not mean anything to you, but they gave me pause this week. And it gave me a time to remember to be what God has called me to be. So I told my mentee, who is now an authorized minister, 
she was having some issues with her church. And I said, it's hard to be the pastor, to do the right thing. They want to gather together and be together in one space. But we need to be the church and be what God has called us to be. It's not about being afraid. God is always there holding us. How are you pausing? How are you breathing? Amen. As we move into this time of prayer, pray. Share the names, knowing that as you share those names, they are on a public site. But pray. Pray for one another and pause and know that God. Studied about that good old way, then who shall wear the woven crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, children, let's go down, let's go down. Don't you want to go down? Oh, children, let's go down, down in the valley to pray. As I went down in the valley to pray, 
Kingdom come, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into a time of sharing our tithes, our offerings, our treasure, there are a couple ways to do that. If you go on to vermilioncongregational.org, you will find Tithely there. It is a way that you can set up to give one time, to give many times, to give weekly. There's many ways to do it. You can also, on that, pick to do um, some different uh, givings, like uh, for next Sunday, especially for Strength in the Church, our special offering. If you don't want to do that or aren't comfortable with that, you can always send your offering into the church, 990 State Street, and it is being picked up and put in the offering. So let us give to God because the gifts that God has shared with us, the ministry as we are the church together. There's a song that Avery and Marsh wrote, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the church, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is the resting, is not a resting place. The church is the people. We are the church together. So let us continue to give to the ministry, our treasure, and our gifts, and our talent. Praise God through whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, Comforter. Why God triumph, whom we adore. It is the last Sunday of Easter, and so we share this Lord of the Dance together. Will you stand in your homes and dance as we sing Lord of the Dance? Whip 
to share a meal. Being in separate places, it's hard to share this meal. But it is a meal where we gather every time we eat. It is a meal of love, of compassion, of the Spirit and of Christ. So share. Share your bread, share your cup, use common elements, and know, know that we are not alone. The cup of blessing, the bread of life, anytime you eat and drink, know that God is with you. And so as we go out eating and drinking, as we go out sharing and pausing, as we go out, into this world. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us now and forevermore. Go dancing and praising God.